Hi, everybody. This is Laura, City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today, I have a layout that I made for Mixed Media Mayhem. For this week's Mixed Media Mayhem, we were challenged to use stamping, ink, oxide, or sprays, and vellum on our layout. Because I knew I wanted to have a mixed media background, I used a piece of 120 pound cardstock and I coated it with some white gesso. I'm using a Stamperia stencil and some Liquitex modeling paste and I'm adding some texture to the background. At the beginning of the video, I trace around my photo with a pencil so that I knew where to put the mixed media on the background. I didn't want the texture paste that was in the background to look too symmetrical. I wanted it to be a little irregularly shaped. So I made the area with the modeling paste go a little bit lower on the right hand side than on the left hand side. So now the modeling paste is all dry and I'm adding some color to the layout. I'm using some Lindy's Magicals. These are powdered pigment and you can activate the color by spraying them with water. Before I go any further, I just wanted to apologize for my voice. It's a little weak. I've just been a little under the weather lately. I feel fine, but my voice just hasn't recovered. So I'm sorry about that. I'm adding a couple of different colors. I start out with two main colors, Screamin' Banshee Black and Tainted Love Teal. And I love the way the two colors look together. And this is from a set of Halloween Magicals that I bought quite a while back. And I love the way they look on the background. Now the only problem with gessoing the background is that the colors don't dry as bright and intense as they look when they're wet. I think that if I hadn't used the gesso, the color would be a little bit brighter. It's a very different experience to make a background with gesso than without gesso. Gesso really helps you to be able to manipulate the color and move it around. And without the gesso, you can make a really beautiful background and the colors will be very intense, but you have to really plan where you're going to put the color because wherever you put it, you really can't change that or move it around. So there are pros and cons to using the gesso. I really love using a gesso. I've just gotten kind of used to it. I was okay with the fact that the color faded a little bit when it was dry. I just went ahead and added a couple more layers of the colors to my layout. And magicals often have a surprise or unexpected color in them. And I noticed that one of these colors had a little touch of yellow and I really liked the way that little bit of yellow looked with these colors. I thought that it went with them quite well. I'm continuing to build up the color by adding additional layers. I made sure that the first layer was dry before adding a second layer. I also added a couple of splatters using my paintbrush and I'm just continuing to add the magicals. You really just need a tiny bit of them. There have been times when I've put way too much powder on my layout, but I think now I know the right amount to add. Once the background dries, you could see that the color does look a lot lighter and I was thinking that I could make it look a little bit better by adding some splatters of water and then lifting the color up with the paper towel, something I love to do, but the colors just weren't really dark enough for that to look the way that I was picturing it would look in my head. So I decided to go in with yet another round of the colors, added the powder, I'm spraying with the water and trying to get those colors a little bit more intense. I'm using these colors to create a Halloween vibe and you'll see in a little while that my photo doesn't really look like it has much to do with Halloween but I took this photo on a family trip that we took to Salem in October several years ago. We went to a museum that was right there on the main strip throughout October in Salem everything is Halloween themed. And I was trying to decide if I should make the photos that were in the museum, which was not necessarily related to Halloween, like the other layouts and make them themed, or if I should just make them regular non-themed layouts. And I finally decided that I was going to keep that 
Halloween theme consistent throughout the album. I just thought it would look kind of funny to have just a couple of pages that looked a little serious and the rest of them have all of the Halloween embellishments. I continue to build up those layers of color by adding more of the magicals, spraying water, moving the color around until I like the way it looks, and then drying the background, and then I repeat it again. Since part of the recipe for this week's layout included inks, oxides, or sprays, and I'm not sure if magicals qualify, I thought I would add some splatters using some sprays. I use Heidi Swap Color Shine in teal, and then I also use a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist called Spooky Night, and I thought that by adding some splatters, it would help the background to look a little bit more interesting. I always love to add those splatters to the background. I used some water and a paper towel to clean up a few areas where I thought there was a little bit too much overspray. And then I added the Spooky Night splatters. That's a great purple color, perfect for Halloween. Again, you can see when the color dried, it faded a bit. I was thinking that I could add a little bit of green into the background. So I'm again using a Lindy's Magical and this Magical is called Freaky Frankenlime, which I think is a great name for a color. I don't generally cut out much of the mixed media portion of creating the layout. When I first started doing mixed media years ago, I really enjoyed and learned a lot from watching people like Missy Whitten and Caddy Miranda making their mixed media backgrounds. However, for this layout, I just spent too much time adding layer after layer and the process repeated itself in pretty much the same way. So I am going to cut out some of this process. After adding a few more layers of color, I was happy with the intensity of the magicals. I thought that they were bright enough, and I also thought that the color was dark enough so that when I sprinkled some water on top and lifted up some of the color, that those droplets would be noticeable. So I did that a couple of times on the background, and I really like the way that takes a big, almost flat area of color and add some variation within those larger areas and just makes it look more interesting. I love to add black and white splatters to my layouts. I'm going to be doing some stamping on the background, so I know I'm gonna be adding some more black, but I did wanna add a few black splatters, and then I added a whole bunch of white splatters to the background as well. Both the black and the white are watered down acrylic paint. And the white paint does fade as it dries, so it doesn't look quite as intense or bright as it does right now. There was a little bit more splattering of color than I wanted in a couple of areas at the top of the layout. So that's an easy fix with the gessoed background. I just got an old paintbrush and some white gesso and I dabbed the gesso onto the areas where I wanted to fade out the color. I'm not worried about totally covering up the splatters. I just don't want splatters everywhere. And this helps me to be able to shape that area of color. I'm using some stays on ink in jet black and a stamp that I have in my stash. It's a script stamp and I'm adding the stamping in a couple of areas, but you could see that I keep the stamping generally to the areas of color. Sometimes I like to go slightly outside of them, but I don't like to stamp on areas of the background that are white. To add a few more textures to the background, I use a mesh stamp and I also have a dot stamp. And these are stamps that I use all the time. I really should get out my stamp cleaner and clean these up. I use them and very rarely clean them. And over the years, I've collected quite a few stamps, but I find that there are only maybe a dozen or so that I tend to use on the mixed media backgrounds. I feel like you don't need a ton of different stamps. You just need a couple of different textures. And I like to have certain combinations of textures. I like to combine textures that look a little different. Some are a little lighter, some are a little darker. And I think that you really don't need a lot of different stamps to make a nice stamped background. So I'm finally done with the background and I'm starting to work on my photo. You could see the photo on my mat and I'm using some pattern paper. This is from a Tim Holtz pad 
called Abandoned. This is an 8 by 8 inch pad and the patterns on this pad are just absolutely gorgeous. I love them. I cut out a number of pattern papers. I distressed the edges with my edge distressor and then I layered them up and attach them behind the photo with some ATG adhesive. And then I wanted to add a little bit of dimension. So I put some fun foam on the back of my photo. I don't know why I put it on kind of backwards, but then I just flipped it over so that the sticky side was facing the photo, put some ATG adhesive on the foam, and then I stuck it down to my page. And this is just temporary. I will have to go back in later with some gel glue or some other wet glue so that it will be held down permanently. The last ingredient in our recipe this week is vellum. So I use my dies and I cut out some vellum spider webs and I placed them all around the photo. I tucked part of them underneath the photo and I kind of liked the way those looked. I thought that was pretty cool. I never tried that before. Then I used some more of those Tim Holtz pattern papers and I punched out some photo corners for my photo. I use an EK Success scalloped photo corner punch. I ink the edges of each of those photo corners with some black soot distress oxide. Then I attach them down to the photo. I wanted to extend the stamping past the area of color just a little bit. I thought it would make the stamping a little more noticeable. And I also like when there's a transition area between a large area of color in the background and the white background. So for example, splatters around the edge, I think that helps to transition or bring the two areas together. And I think the same thing about having the stamping overlapping on the background. I think it brings the background and the color together. I'm going to call this layout Peabody Museum. <laughs> Not a very original title, but that's where we were. I use the same pattern paper that I used to make the photo corners and I'm using a Sizzix letter die. It's one of those ones that is all together on one plate. I really like those when the letters are small and they're just those individual letter dies. I find them very hard to find and I find that it's much easier to find the letters I need when it's all on one big plate. I cut out each of the letters that I needed three times, twice out of white cardstock and once out of the Tim Holtz pattern paper, the same one that I used for the photo corners. I layered them all together with, of course, the pattern paper on the top, glued them, and then I inked the edges with some Distress Oxide in black soot. And now I'm attaching them down with some ATG adhesive. And sometimes I'll go back and use some wet glue to attach these down later on. But I do spend a long time lining up all the letters and getting them exactly the way I want them. Next, I started looking for some embellishments that I thought would go well with the layout. And I found a pack of Martha Stewart epoxy stickers. And they are, I thought, appropriate for this museum photo. I added a chair to the right of the photo, a candelabra over the photo. There was a cute goblet that I put on the left-hand side and a candle that I put to the left of the title. Next to the goblet is a little jar that says graveyard dust. That was a Fun Stamper's Journey clip. I just removed the clip part and I thought that it was a nice compliment to that little goblet. And then I was thinking that I could add a tag at the top of the layout and that I could use the tag to anchor some of the embellishments. I trimmed it down a little bit and then I used some ribbon and I tied a bow at the top. In the end, I removed the tag from this layout. I thought that it drew the eye too far up on the layout. The photo is already closer to the top than to the bottom of the layout and I didn't want to bring the eye even further up onto the page. The chipboard banner under the photo says scary, spooky, fun. And I love that line of jack-o'-lanterns at the top of the photo. I wanted to add a little something, but I didn't want to go too crazy with embellishing the photo. I thought that was just enough. And then I started going around the layout and attaching the elements down with the ATG adhesive. I didn't want the candelabra to be all alone at the top of the page, so I added a little chipboard skull right next to it. I added a chipboard piece that says haunted on top of the title, and then I had three round little chipboard pieces, so I added one of them to each of the clusters. 
I wanted to add a couple of bats, so I used some sticko bats and I began spreading them around the layout. I always think that bats are a great embellishment to add to Halloween themed layouts. Something about them I just love. This is where I started to think that that tag was just not right for this layout, so I removed it and rearranged the embellishments. Unfortunately, I only had two chipboard spiders. I wish I had three, but I had to make do with two. And then I used some enamel dots to add a little bit of an accent to each of the photo corners, and that completes this layout. And here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Once again, I'm really sorry about my voice and I appreciate you sticking with me till the end. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out all of the Mixed Media Mayhem videos for this week. The links to the channels of everybody who participates in Mixed Media Mayhem are in the description box. You could also check out the Facebook group. I hope everybody has a fantastic day and I will see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.